Sometimes for us, it is children who are the family members that cause us most to struggle. I heard some years ago uh, from a professing Christian man that he picked the church to which his family would go on the basis of the wishes of his 14 year old son. I was so appalled, totally disgusted. 14 year old son determined what church they go to. A 14 year old son who knows as much about following Jesus Christ as I would know about the geography of Inner Mongolia. And he was the one, not the father, who's the head of the home, not even the mother, who might be expected to know something about the scriptures, but what a 14 year old boy decided on the basis of friends in the church. And that is just pure idolatry. Because Jesus Christ is the reason why someone's in the church. Jesus Christ, as he is represented in the three marks of the church, Christ tells you where you go to church. Where the word is explained in the preaching, where the sacraments are administered properly according to the word of God, and where church discipline is managed according to the scriptures. Don't go to your 14 year old son. Never heard the like of it. I tried to explain to the guy who didn't know it either. You don't go with that. You go with Christ. This means too that you've got to not allow your children to lead you into sin either. If your children watch sinful DVDs, you go to them and explain from the scriptures why what they're doing is wrong, and then you throw these DVDs in the fire. And if you don't have a fire, you throw them in the bin. Because you love Jesus Christ and are willing to hate father, mother, son, daughter, wife, children, whatever it takes, <coughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. This too impinges upon the Lord's day. Family and the Lord's day, that one day in seven that Christ peculiarly consecrates as his own. Some of you may have looked at the calendar. You know that the 25th of December this year is on a Saturday. What if it were on a Sunday? And one year in seven, it will be. Would you come to church if it were on a Sunday? Would you come to church once and not twice? Would you skip both services and then say, well, it's only one week. It's only one day of the year. Which is a bit like saying, well, I didn't commit adultery by sleeping with another woman for 364 days in the year. And I only did it one day of the year. And I can't understand why my wife is all bothered. The fourth commandment not a suggestion, is remember the Sabbath day. And you say, oh, it's family tradition, this is the way we've done it for years. We always have a big day, no matter what day it falls on. We give presents. We do these festivities. Oh, so the fourth commandment is because of your, oh, it's your traditions. Okay, that's the way it goes. Do you remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees? You break the commandments of God in order to keep your own traditions. Your traditions weigh higher with you and heavier than God's commandments. <clears throat> and that was Jesus' condemnation of them. In other words, what your family, what your traditions say outweigh scripture, that's idolatry. Jesus Christ must come first, and that isn't just some nice slogan, that means that he comes first above your tradition and what your family does. And he comes first above whatever the in-laws or the outlaws or the cousins or the aunts are. Christ. And instead, the proper approach is, what a wonderful opportunity to witness to them. To tell them that Jesus Christ means more to me than my family. Then they might actually listen. Then they might think that my religion means something to me. And then some of them will probably give you a little bit of chip. And some of them might say, I'd like to hear more about that. What does the Bible say about these things? I never hear about that. What does Jesus teach? 
What happens if your family calls down on the Lord's day? And you say, well, I wouldn't want to offend them. It's time to go to church, but I better stay in and talk to Uncle Bob. But you are worried, but you are willing, though, to offend Jesus Christ. Who says, if you're to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, and I rose on the first day of the week for your salvation and for your good that you might come to church and be built up. But you say, Uncle Harry, we'll keep Uncle Harry right and we offend Christ and his church. Instead, you have a wonderful opportunity to be a witness, to tell them about the beauty of the Lord's day, to tell them why you should do that. But then I became a Christian. And as a Christian, I love Jesus Christ and I come to worship the God who created me. I'm going to have to answer to him one day for how I use this Lord's Day, and you will too. And you know what you should do? You should come with me. We'll all come and worship the Lord together. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, he cannot be my disciple. And if ever you're going off on any sort of family holiday, you should make it very clear from the start, before anybody buys tickets, that you're not going to fly on the Lord's Day. And if it's a little bit dear to fly on a Monday, so be it. But the fourth commandment is inviolable. And then you say, well, this is hard. It's going to be difficult for me and my family. It always is. Is there anybody here who hasn't had difficulty with their family and unbelievers? Is it possible to be a Christian and not encounter struggles with your family. I've been through it for many years. I'm sure you have too. Jesus Christ makes discipleship costly. If your discipleship is not costly, are you a disciple at all? And then, if this helps, think what it would be like if you were brought up in a Muslim home. And they're all devout Muslims. You become a Christian and they are all ashamed of it as the blackest of black sheep. Worse they might think if you had become a homosexual. And that's pretty bad in their eyes. But you become a Christian. And then your father and your mother and your brothers and your sisters and your uncle and your aunt, they're all against you. Your town's against you. Your country's against you. In some countries, you have ceased to be a citizen. And then you think, Luke 14, verse 26, and you think to yourself, we have it relatively easy. You might wake up someday, you might find yourself in such a family being smothered by the pillow that you rested your head upon. That's happening. Happening even in Britain too. And all of this is teaching us that the Christian is guided not by feelings, not by what his family is doing, not by society. He's guided by principle. That's what a Christian is. The question he asks is not, will this get me in trouble? Is this hard? Is this easy? It's this. What saith the scriptures? Not what saith my family. He's guided by this command, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added on to you, not seek first father or children or brothers. He remembers the great commandment to love the Lord of God with all his heart, soul, strength and mind, and not even his wife that much. Because he's to love his neighbor and his wife as himself. But he's to love the Lord of God with his heart, soul, strength and mind. 